Welcome back, everybody. This is the Ask Your Brother program on 90.5 FM, tpcradio.com, and through the beautiful miracle of internet world, we are back here once again, Jose Nolasco with you, and our wonderful co-host, Mr. Stephen Larkin. That's right. That's right. Stephen, you helped me today. I had a theme, that a question that we were going to ask about, right? And, and, and But you brought this idea to my head that just blew my mind, and I said, you know what? That is such a good point. <laughs> That is such a good question. Let's talk about that today. So we're going to get into it. I'll ask the question in just a minute. But Stephen, can you help me with your Bible? Go to 2 Corinthians mm. chapter 11. Let's go. Oh, this is going to get really good, really interesting, <laughs> really, really life-altering as all scripture is. Mm -hmm. and chapter 11 verses, uh, let's read 3 and 4, would you? All right, you got it. And I fear uh, that some... Uh, Somehow your minds may be seduced away from simple and pure devotion to Messiah or Christ, just as uh, Eve was deceived by the serpent and his craftiness. For if someone comes and tells you about some other Jesus than the one that we told you about, or if you receive uh, a spirit different from the one you received, or accept some so-called good news or gospel different from the good news you already accepted, you... Uh, bear with him well enough. So that's pretty pretty scary. A different gospel. Exactly. So so I'm gonna launch the question on you in a minute, Stephen. You're gonna help us out. Now yeah. check this out. So 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 to someone who's reading this scripture, there's a couple things that come up. Now one of the keys, remember Eve in this. Okay, we're gonna come back to Eve mm -hmm. in a minute. But but when you look at it, it says, for instance, it says, you know, uh, you you accept another Messiah, another Jesus. Okay, that's number one. But the other thing it says, and then another gospel or other gospels, depending on the version that you're reading from, right? And you so easily accept it. Mm. So the question for someone who maybe does not have a lot of time in Jesus um, or not a lot of, you know, doctrinal knowledge. So, so, so does that mean Paul was saying that there is more than one Jesus? Ooh. Question 1A and then question 1B. And because he says other gospel or other gospels mm -hmm. and you guys to accept it so easily. Are there other Gospels? So is there another Jesus? Are there multiple Jesuses? And are there multiple Gospels? Stephen, take it away. Take it away. So I think like we see that the devil is not creative in and of himself. He's a copycat. Right. So Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life. Yes. But the devil would love to get us off that road, off that way, away from the truth, away from the life. So he presents other ways. He presents things that will deceive us and trick us like mm -hmm. he did with Eve mm -hmm. uh, in order for us to, to stumble and go the wrong way. So, yeah, there are other people who bring different Gospels. We see it in different religions all over the world okay. where Jesus told us he's the only gate. He's the only way to the I Father. I am the narrow gate. Yeah. I am the way. The not way. one way. Not the <laughs> best way. The, the only, only way one the way to the Father. Yes. Yeah. And, and Stephen, let me help you help us with that. Please, so, let's go. so. I thought about this. Now, what's actually going on there, and that's why it's always important to see mm -hmm. things in context. I think I thank the Lord for people like uh, Pastor Chuck Smith, Pastor Jack Hafer, Pastor yeah. John MacArthur, people that studied well the Bible and have served the Lord well. Some are with the Lord now and some are not. Um, but they all concur in that what was happening with Corinthians, mm -hmm. interesting enough. Now, now Stephen and I are from, if you want to look at it that way, uh, I don't think Jesus is worried about it, and neither are we. Uh, but, but we participate in a denomination. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Um, we're part of the body. And we would be part of what? some would consider full gospel right mm -hmm. we believe that that the, uh, there's only one gospel right one gospel but that the same the gifts and all of the things that god poured out on his people then are still available to us today mm -hmm. interesting enough even that is not part of the gospel mm -hmm. what is the gospel is the gospel itself jesus mm -hmm. christ he was the answer to prophecy that he came had a supernatural birth born of the virgin mary that he that he came that he ministered that he suffered that he died he lived a sinless life that he was buried and on the third day he rose again he rose and now again. sits at the right hand of the father right okay and those who believe in him won't get lost but have mm -hmm. eternal life that's the gospel but i say that to say then you have what was happening here yeah. and and all of these great teachers of ours concur that what was happening with corinth is that while they were exceedingly blessed with spiritual gifts mm -hmm. the problem was they were living life in a very ungodly way many of them 
And part of what created that was that there were people coming in. And there seemed to be two groups of people. Mm -hmm. One, on the one side, the Judaizers, who wanted them to get into all these rules and regulations. Essentially, you have to be a Jew and a Christian in order to be accepted. That was the one group. And the second group was actually a more liberal group. And, and they just wanted them, you know, just kind of like, let's loosen up the rules, guys. What's with all these rules? I mean, Jesus is all about love, isn't he? I mm. mean, at the end of the day, you know, just like the hippie movement, isn't it all about love? There's grace for everything, <laughs> right. so let's just keep singing. This, let's just, you know? right. And that's not Jesus. That's not the Jesus of the Gospels. That's not mm -hmm. the Gospel. Yeah. And I say that, Stephen, because it, ironically, so if I put two categories there, group number one that was that was affecting the church there at Corinth, Group number one, the guys that want lots of rules, lots and lots of regulation. Mm. Then you have group number two, the guys that want to be so liberal. Now you flash forward a few thousand years, you know, a thousand plus years later, and ask yourself the question, has the world really advanced? Or is the church so far ahead that we're not seeing those two groups anywhere? And the answer would be... No, no, we still see, we still see those yeah. groups. You got some groups that present Jesus to you with a list of things that you have to do and live in, by in order to be in saved. To be saved. Yeah. And then you get another group that's like, oh, don't worry. It's mm. all good, brother. You don't have to worry. The important thing, didn't Jesus love everybody? And I've heard people say that to me who want to live very sinful lives, and that's their justification. Let's go back to what the Bible says about love, <laughs> okay, right? right? What does love even mean? Well, it's love interesting. When I look at, it, it, isn't it interesting? The, the one in Corinthians where it talks about love is patient, mm -hmm. love is kind. And you go down the list, it says, doesn't look out for its own. Yeah, yeah it says that it's not Ooh. rough. It's never forceful. It's never, you know, so, so if it's really love, yeah. yeah. So, so if you really want to say that Jesus is all about love, Brother, his definition of love it's and the world's definition of love different. are two different definitions. Yeah, today, so, yeah, the world's <laughs> definition of love is all about myself. It's right. what can you do for me? Right, That's right. That's not Jesus' definition That's of love. That's not Jesus. Because Jesus <laughs> went to the cross. Isn't yeah, it amazing so when the scripture sacrifice. tells us that he loved us mm -hmm. while we were still sinners? Amen. Before I even had a desire, thought, or, or, or even consideration about loving God, he'd already died on the cross for me, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Is that big so or is that true. not? It's huge. And because we can earn it, we didn't deserve it. it. And like even in Romans chapter 5 verse 8, it says, Very rarely will someone die for mm -hmm. even a good man. Even a good man. But even while we were still sinners, Christ died, died for, for us. Died for us. Wow. Isn't that the truth? You know, you yeah. hear about guys that were on a war zone. And, and, and they, they had their buddies and one of them, throw them throws themselves on a grenade or something to protect the rest of the mm -hmm. troop, right? And, and everybody reveres him because he did this for us. He was a true friend. Now, imagine Jesus. Yeah. We were down. I, when Jesus came, when I came to Jesus, Jesus rescued me. Believe me, I didn't even like me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but so he true. died for that yeah. guy. He didn't die for the guy with the nice blue shirt sitting next to this really cool guy. <laughs> Jesus died for the dirty, yeah. sinful, shame-filled man mm -hmm. that I was before I came to Jesus, before I knew the true Jesus, before I, I, I basically and completely surrendered to the true gospel. And, and I say that because it's interesting. You know, I, I, I've said, we talked the last time, um, and we touched on a little bit, if I don't recall the whole thing, but I thought we talked about Mars Hill for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how, how, how did Paul end up in Athens oh, yeah. talking to these, like, the, the, the top level of <laughs> where art and culture and, mm -hmm. and, and philosophies and, and human knowledge and even writings, books, they say that, that Athens in that season was still so the Mecca if you want to look at it that yeah, way, really of tough. humanism, human knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. When Paul shows up on the scene and has to defend his theory there that Jesus and him crucified, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it's so good to think about it. But even when he did, you know, you look at that and, and you look at the challenge it was to just show Jesus. I mean, they had all these gods, right? All yeah. kinds of gods with all kinds of different ways that they functioned, all kinds of different things that they had to know about them. And yet, and yet, you look at it, and Paul was like, man, I just want to talk to you about Jesus. I just want to talk to you about how he was resurrected and connect the dots, if you will. Yeah. Isn't that amazing how much there was a challenge, there was all mm -hmm. of these things. 
And I say that to say because I think in today's economy, now now watch, I, I think I said in that day, um, they've recently changed my work group where I work. And I said, it's like changing high schools. You got to find out who the new cool kids are in this one and all that. I mean, you think, right, that as we get older, we'd mature. But let me give you a secret, guys. It doesn't change that much. <laughs> but anyways, so so my new work group. And there's some really cool and amazing people to work with. And then there's some that's like, eh, they're almost as bad as me. So, um, but I say that to say, but there's one that I just love to death because he's an avowed atheist. And mm. and, and I know it sounds crazy, but but the Lord has given me a love for this person. And because ironically in, in America and, and around, you know, the, the so-called developed nations in Europe and stuff, it's getting harder and harder to share your your um, your opinions when it comes to the gospel, when it comes yeah. to Jesus. And it's kind of ridiculous, honestly. But in an enlightened society, you would think everybody gets to share their point. Isn't that what Paul did at Athens? Yeah. I mean, and those guys were enlightened. So if they were smart enough to handle it. Why like, can't my friend? Next week, we'll <laughs> right, we'll talk more. again, yeah. right? Okay, so anyways, so this about atheist, he went in and he says, hey, you know, I just want to know why you guys are okay with living in contradiction. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> well, says, well, you say that you believe the Bible. Well, the Bible says they created a- that God created Adam, right? Yeah. He says, well, so Adam is made in the image of God? I said, yeah, that's what the Bible says. Okay. And then he play, points to a co-worker, male, and he says that. And then he points to a female co-worker. Says, but then you said that God invented woman, Eve, right? And I said, yeah, that's what the Bible says, that God, God created, not invented, right? <laughs> Eve. And I said, yeah, that's true, too. And But you say that she's in God's image, too. And I said, yeah, that's true, too. And then he says, so so how do you live in that contradiction? Just Just tell me this. Just settle this. Is God a man or is God a woman? Oh. And I thought, oh my goodness. I said, brother, I am so glad. Now, first of all, I get excited because if I had brought the conversation up, yeah. I could run the risk of being a guy that's proselytizing or trying to share religion, right? But because he brought it up, I'm like, oh, okay. I let's like, go. Let's talk about this. So we had a great conversation about how and I and I even shared about Mars Hill a little bit and how Paul went up against the elite, all mm. of the people. And when he's really like leaning in, leaning in, okay, so what's the answer? So the answer is that God isn't like man in that he needs to have two eyes, a nose, a mouth. I said, I don't even know if God has a mouth. I said, mm. what it's saying is the triuneness of it, body, mm. soul, spirit, our ability to reason, and that's why God, unlike the animals, on judgment day says that no one will be without with excuse for not having responded to the gospel. And so it was just a Mm. great opportunity to share. Bringing it back to this, it was one Jesus, one gospel. We didn't go to the left and go, oh, well, well, you know, let let me explain to you. I said, I even told him, I said, you know, some people take it further in this time in history. I Mm -hmm. said, not only do they say, well, God made male, God made female. They said, aha, that's proof. God is trans. It's like, what? They're like, yeah, don't you get it? That's why we, if we're like God, if God can choose to be a woman one day and God can choose to be the man next day, then we as humans, like him, should be able to choose. And I thought, wow, isn't that something? So, well, that's not what I read in the Bible. They're Mm -hmm. both equal. They're both wonderful. They're both beautiful. They're both made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. But the physical has very little or none to do with it. I said, it's actually how God has composed humanity that, that makes it in the image of God. And it was a great conversation. I don't believe that he was converted. I didn't see him raise his hand and go on his knees. But I choose to believe that God is dealing with him. But mm. staying on the same track. One gospel. Yeah. One Jesus. I'm not talking about a different kind of Jesus. But is it not true, Stephen, that some denominational groups today are starting to shift on those answers? Hmm. They're starting to say, well, maybe, maybe the important thing is love. And Jesus is all about love. So I guess it's okay if... Yeah. And they add in a whole plethora of sins and say it's okay because, hey, Jesus is about love. Didn't he love everybody? Shouldn't you love everybody? Thoughts, ideas? Is that a different Jesus than the Bible? I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think a lot of different uh, people are, are shifting away from the, the fundamentals of the gospel. And that is so important for us to not, like, shy away from sharing the whole truth. You know, the, the scripture is clear that Jesus came to pay the price. We're not going to go back into our sin that grace may abound, as the Apostle right. Paul talks right. about. Oh, Lord, that's great. I'm really stretching <laughs> that grace out today, Lord. No, no, no that's why. No it's like, Paul, that's Paul's not why I died clear. for it's you. Like, no, yeah, but uh, that's not the, the point of it. 
the point is that Jesus is changing us to be more in his image. Mm -hmm. You know, we're he's taking the sin out of us. He's mm -hmm. aligning us with his will. Right. With his desires, not him aligning with our desires. Our desires are like that shifting sand. They change mm. day by day. The culture says this is okay. Well, now it's not. And this is not okay. Now it is. And they're, they're always changing. But Jesus is the solid rock. Okay. And uh, you're making a great point. And Stephen, you and I are both blessed. We both have teens at home. We you're both definitely. have teens at home. I've got a couple of young adults plus the teens. <laughs> but we still got teens at home, yeah. right? Now, how does that help us help them mm. in this season where they're being challenged to they're accept? Being challenged they're being challenged to accept as as teenagers, as young adults on the college or the university campus, these redefinitions of who Jesus is. Hey, welcome, John Miranda. Thumbs up, brother. Uh, so thoughts for your daughter, for our, our teenagers, things like that. I mean, what, what are your thoughts for them? Because I think people will challenge them to yeah. accept a different Jesus or to present Jesus a different way. My, my, yeah. One of my kids recently at a junior college here locally, they said there were people handing out these leaflets. And, and, leaflets, and they said they were so um, like nice. calm, nice, uh, engaging. Mm -hmm. and, and they were talking about the mother God theology. <laughs> And, and it's not that I'm against women or I think women are less because I think I, I was raised for a season of my life in, in, in my childhood by a, a single mom and a grandmother and some aunts and a few uncles mm -hmm. and what have you. And I can tell you, I have high esteem for women. Mm -hmm. I really believe uh, that I was trained to revere them as even higher than yourself. And I think it's biblical because even when we look at the husband-wife relationship, yeah. we're Honor supposed to love other. them, right? We're mm -hmm. supposed to love them as Christ loved the church who gave himself for her, yeah. meaning she's more valuable than he is to the man. Um, I also think that even just as Christians, it says that count each other more, think more highly of your brother, mm -hmm. of the other guy than your self mm -hmm. i think that helps us in our humility that's the jesus that i yeah. see in the bible because even though he was god he didn't think it was robbery to come into this tiny little show called a human mm -hmm. body right he humbled yeah. himself because he loved and so i say that to say uh they were giving this theology about a mother god and about a son thing and it was so not the gospel mm -hmm. and it was so not jesus brother and and it's out there but they were so inviting they were so warm they were so loving and i thought but at the end of the day, isn't that a different Jesus? Yeah, and Paul warns us that, you know, even if a, an angel or someone sure. else, even if we came back sharing a different gospel, don't accept it. So we got to be clear to know what the Word of God says. And if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it is, it's a false thing. It's, it's not good. We got to be careful with that. We are, we do see in Scripture that Jesus was elevating women. Yes. To a place above where the culture would allow where it to be. Where the culture was allowing it, He yeah. was taking care of widows. He was like, the church was all about that even after uh, he rose from the dead. They were and especially in the New Testament, isn't it awesome to see? Because yeah. we now we went from a from the Judaism kind of, you know, that, that culture to the uh, Athenian, to mm -hmm. the Greek, to the you know Arab kind of, to different cultures. And it's interesting. We see yeah. in the New Testament women who were... Uh, important women in business and that helped support the oh, gospel yeah. and had different callings. There were women apostles. There were <clears> women, <throat> you know, who had the church in their home. There were, you know, the, the church was oh allowing my gosh. them to come inside Steven, the service. Stephen, we're going to have to put a yeah. pin in the women apostles because we just had a great debate with some brothers about... Oh, we can do that. Even today, and it had nothing to do with male or female, uh -huh. about apostleships and the requirements. So we're going to put a pin in that. that I'm not good. saying that I agree. I'm not saying that I disagree. I just want to <laughs> enter into that more fully, okay? Yeah. But the idea is that women and men are mm -hmm. equally valuable. You don't hear in the gospel that says, first he died for men and then for women. Not at all. Not at all, because we are equal in him. But I say that to say, because then people try to use that to pick a fight, you know, to, to, to get us to attack mm. each other, you know, about, well, the Bible is about. All I know, all I know is that God came and he died equally for men, equally for women. He died for every sinner, right? Mm -hmm. And that includes me, right? Yeah. I have to say it that way because I think that, especially in this season, the world is so good about misusing mass media to get us to pit us against each other and to get us to see Jesus either in a different light or to completely change what the gospel says about him. Look, if I try to give you a Jesus, it's not worried about sin. He's bigger Ooh, than child. sin. He's not worried about pride because he created pride. Ooh. He's not worried about your lust for money because he's the owner of all money. Mm. I'm sorry. I don't care what you say. 
that's not the Jesus we see in the Bible. No, Man, you think about money. I think about, I, I said previously, there's two categories of people that were found in this, in Corinth in its mm-hmm. day, right? Guys that were blessed and filled with, with spiritual gifts, but living in a very disorderly way. And it's because they had two groups attacking them. Mm-hmm. Number one, influenced by the guys that wanted lots of rules. The Judaizers wanted them to be Christians, but also Jews follow all the rules, which remember class, the Jews weren't able to keep the rules. <laughs> they took the Ten Commandments, made over 600 rules, right? Mm. And so they wanted the Christians to now be subject to both. No. So that's not the gospel. The other group was very liberal. And they're like, well, you know, we're grace about, we're sin abounds. Grace abounds more, gentlemen. So mm. I don't think we have to stress about our shortcomings. You know what I mean? Everybody sins. No. And I say that happens today. And I think that that's how the enemy gets in because the clue was before we start. As Eve in the garden, who was deceived, that's the enemy's only game. Mm. I mean, because if he got us to read the scriptures, we'd struggle with ideas like that, where we're going to be soft on sin. Or we're like, Mm. no, that's not, that's not at all who God is. God is not soft on sin. God is not scared by sin. God is not worried about sin because he's holy. But what he is worried about is that he wants us to be like him. He wants us to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. He wants us to live in light of the one gospel, Stephen. Yeah. And that's important to remember. It is important. And we, we see even in Deuteronomy where he like, says, I set before you life and death, mm-hmm. blessings and curses. He wants us to choose life that we can live. He wants to bless us. The sin is a poison. It's a, it's a toxic thing to our soul. And he doesn't want those things dragging us down. We, we cannot be conformed to his image. If we're rejecting his way. Right. And that doesn't mean that we're not going to struggle with our yeah. flesh. That's a that's a constant reality. I mean, in it the previous time. session of Spanish, yeah. the, the other co-host was bringing up, Yvonne was saying, well, I mean, look at, look at how Paul had to deal with Peter because he was not being <laughs> integral. He had no integrity when he was mm. Jew, with the Jews. When the Jews showed up, he was living one way. When he was with the non-Jews, when he was with the Greeks, he was mm. living a different way. And I thought, yeah, you know, as soon as the Jews showed around, oh, no, somebody passed the lamb, right? Somebody passed the lamb, no cheese on my sandwich kind of thing. But as soon as they left, like, hey, anybody got some pork rinds around here? You know, he's like, he's just running and he's just like, hey. But the point is, look at Peter. No doubt he's an apostle. Peter, no doubt he performed signs, miracles, and wonders along with Jesus. Peter was the one that the Lord used, not Peter himself, for 5,000 to come to Jesus Mm -hmm. on at least one occasion. I mean, that's incredible. And yet... He had to be called out. I Mm. say that not to say, well, Peter couldn't handle it. Like, no, I say that to say, hey, God understands that we're going to struggle with our flesh, Mm -hmm. but that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse to then change the gospel. That's not an excuse to present Jesus in a completely different light because that's not who God is. Thoughts on that, Stephen? Yeah, I think it's it's very clear that we're going to love God. If he said, if you love me, you'll follow my commandments. If we love him, we'll live the way that he that he wants us to live. If we love him, and that's what it's really all about, because he loved us, he laid down his life. So if we love him, we'll follow him. And so like that's that's the key to the gospel is following the way. And Jesus said his burden is easy. It's it's light. It's not heavy. The way of love actually empowers us to live his way. Because if we love, we're not gonna be trying to kill our neighbor we're not going to hurt them we're not going to take their stuff or covet it we're not all these things that we're not going to try to impose rules on them we're not going to try to impose rules on them that are not in the bible i mean it's just not biblical you know i have the way i like to dress i have the way i like to eat i have the way i like to do many many things and that's fine and dandy as long as it's not against any principle in the bible right uh but that is not okay for me to then try to push on to others I use this example, life example, before um, as we're wrapping up, uh, talking about other Jesus, talking about other Gospels. Uh, there were some family members once that we talked about whose grandfather, out of the blue, he'd been widowed for, oh gosh, either divorced or widowed. I've got to say the better part of 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. And then one day they just found out that, uh, one, he was married. <laughs> Two, mm-hmm. <laughs> that it really wasn't his choice. And when they asked about it, they said, well, he had joined Mm-hmm. A church that said that they preached the gospel, um, but there they had some form of what I guess we could look at as their own form of apostleship, and that the primary leader uh, had the responsibility to say, okay, well, you've been single, and you've been single too long, and he just marry you. You didn't have choice. That's just, you can't contradict the apostle, right? Wow. And so, so they would couple people together, they'd get married. 
And and on one occasion, they asked him about this this habit that he had of always carrying dark glasses, sunglasses. And they said, well, why does he always wear dark sunglasses, even when indoors? He said, oh, well, you remember that story in the Bible about when Moses went up to the mountain? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so he got so full of the Spirit, it says that he radiated. Well, he's so holy that if he takes off the glasses, you know, you could die. So So he's doing it to protect you and protect me. And I thought, wow, isn't that interesting? Now, is that a different Jesus or what? Yeah, I think that is. I think it's pretty clear that we're not going to elevate anybody Correct. to the place of that this guy speaks for God and he, only his way is the way. The, now, the now way if, if right someone here. purports to speak for God and it lines up with the scriptures, okay, <laughs> right? Yeah, but uh, we're not going to say that we only listen to this one person and we got to shut everybody else out. Right. That, that Jesus is the one you should listen to. Right, <laughs> right. And when people try to define yeah. things, is what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. when people try to define things to us on what, hey, what, what, what leadership looks like, mm -hmm. what holiness looks like, but it's not in the Bible, mm -hmm. then that's either a different what Jesus that? or a different gospel, mm -hmm. both of which, or either one of which, will lead you to perdition. It leads straight away, mm -hmm. away from God, and the only place away from God leads us to hell. Nobody yeah. wants their mm -hmm. love loved one or themselves to go there i don't even want my enemies to go there i mean i know it sounds crazy there are people who drive me crazy and even them yeah. i don't want to see we would never want be that. in hell i want them rest i want them first of all saved mm -hmm. i want them liberated and i want them restored before god and Man. used in a beautiful way even though they drive me crazy you know like this atheist person fantastic i, I don't know why god has given me a great love and appreciation for him <laughs> drives me crazy i feel like you know i show up in the morning and he's already got his three questions or issues ready so like awesome. i'm like bro this is too early. i've told him that's so like bro it's kind of early <laughs> it's like you know so early <laughs> why don't we take this up a little later no 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 i want to know like all right fine <laughs> it's like fine a great problem take the sword out <laughs> ching 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 right you're, you're so funny that. i love your I heart love you're like it's like this is a great problem <laughs> tell me where he's at bro let me give yeah, you the address and the time <laughs> because he's amazing but but you know what oh, i man. see there though i do see a heart that's seeking honestly yeah, i think on a spiritual level i see a heart that's seeking stuff. and he's questioning the flip side of it unlike with other people People. He's actually told me a lot of personal information, mm -hmm. family information, mm -hmm. marital information, which he doesn't do with others. And I find mm -hmm. that ironic because I'm like, <laughs> dude, you're telling me you have a completely different system of thinking, right, of living. Mm -hmm. And yet you want to share your personal life with me. What's up with that? Why do you think people That's do awesome. that? I think that, that people are attracted to the Jesus inside of us. You know, as we live our lives close to him, that they want to be around somebody like that. And so we want to be more like him because Jesus attracted everybody. The sinners, the pagans, the <laughs> I'm prostitutes. Sorry, I, I'm not laughing at you. Just, I'm laughing at me because I'm thinking, you know what? I think that early in the morning, I'm not very Jesus-like. <laughs> It's like, oh, Lord, it's still there. He help me. It's like, yeah. Oh, Lord, help me. So it's help me not to say anything wrong. It's too early. Because people are seeing something of Christ being I believe. Out. No, They're no, seeing I, that I God really is do. real. I, I really do. I think yeah. you're on the money. I think they see it. And, and sometimes I think it's hard because we don't see it. Yeah. Because the Jesus maybe that we're looking at is not the Jesus of the Bible. Mm. Sometimes we think we're not measuring up. I think when you can be presented another Jesus, I think about Gospels like Corinthians, right? All the, the supernatural gifts. Sometimes in some circles, if you're not performing miracles or doing amazing things, mm -hmm. I think you are made to feel like maybe you're just not adequate. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're not you're, you're not first string. You're like second and third, you know, <laughs> and you've got to move it up. Kind of like when Steven's around and then I show up, oh you know, first God. string players. We just went through the Super Bowl. Right. And so, you know, but I'm on the bench and I feel bad because I'm not performing <laughs> the miracles that Steven is performing. Oh no, but there are churches where you feel like that, brother, mm -hmm. where people Same feel like, class. you know what? I, I, I've never gotten like I've never heard the voice of God I've never heard because some people go up there and they say you know this so week you know it, they're yeah. so and, and maybe it's true I, I won't even get into judging that right but what I'm saying is that's hard because to me one more time is that the same gospel is that the same Jesus because mm -hmm. I don't know that that's required to be his son or daughter uh, now don't get me wrong we talked about the principle of uh, earnestly desire all the spiritual yeah. gifts especially prophecy there's there's a word that comes to me but but again that's 
extra if you would it's yeah. earnestly desire just like hey you know uh, my apartment may be getting small my family's getting big i need to earnestly desire that the lord would bless me for that next big mm -hmm. thing right maybe my next apartment will be bigger but but that's that's the next step if you would mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's not my family or i don't have faith if i'm not there yet so earnestly desire to mm -hmm. me is to want to seek to ask for yeah. to wait upon god but my point is is if if i'm telling you that the only way that you can be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. The only way that you can be following the true gospel is if you're like me and I'm apostle like and, and I hear the voice audibly mm -hmm. and I see visions and I see and I see and I add all these things that I do, mm -hmm. but you don't do. Then I'm thinking, but you know, is that really the Jesus that Paul was describing? But, yeah, I mean, but also on the other hand, we, yeah. we have uh, Anyone who is a believer and follower of Christ does have the ability to lay their hands on the sick Absolutely. and they recover as we Absolutely. pray. And it may not always happen. Right. But it doesn't mean we should ever stop praying. No, no. We should no. get out there in faith and believe right. and lay our hands on the sick and praying for people. And if they still are sick, they still die, like... That's not up to us. It, that's up to the That's the why Lord. I pray for salvation. We for gotta people keep like this going. Guy, right? Yeah, don't give up. We right. can still have faith even in the hard times. Right. Something and, doesn't and, make sense. And I think the key there is yeah. to make sure that the Jesus that we present people yeah. and that the, the gospel that gospel. we give, it's the real deal. Mm -hmm. Not anything extra. Not mm -hmm. anything less than, yeah. not anything. A, a great uh, mentor of mine, uh, a great uh, man of God, once said, look, I'm going to make this so easy for you, Nalasco. I'm going to make this so easy <laughs> for you. Here's how you know it's not just the gospel or the true gospel. And I said, well, how, how? Tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> he says, Jesus plus anything is not the gospel. Ooh. Jesus minus anything is not the gospel. Mm. And I thought, that's so deep. So if Jesus, but you don't have to be holy. Jesus, but it's okay to sin. That's a minus. That's not the gospel. Mm. Jesus, but you have to have all the rules. Mm. Jesus, but you have to operate all these things. Like, that's not the gospel. It's just him, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to cling to so that we're not deceived like Eve was. So that we can truly live here on earth as it is in heaven until he comes for us. Stephen, believe it or not, the time's up. Brother, can you pray us home? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for everyone who's listening and watching in. And Lord, we ask that you would bless them, that they would know that they know that they know you, Lord God. We ask yes, that they would know the true gospel and that they would stay with that, that they would be so into your word that any other false gospel that comes, they would immediately recognize mm. that's not the Jesus that is written about. Mm. That's not the one that I know. And they'd be able to push it aside and go back to everything they know in your word, Lord. We ask that you would give them clarity and faith. And Lord, that you would work miracles in our lives in this season, Lord. We thank you that you are still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, Big John Miranda. We love you too, brother. We're waiting for you to come back on the show. Um, just want to also say for those of you guys on the college campus, just be real led on the high school, middle school campus. Hey, don't let your friends, don't let people, professors or anyone get you to try and shave any pieces mm -hmm. off of the gospel to be make it more acceptable. Don't make them try to make you accept a Jesus that you don't find in the scriptures. As you are faithful to him, he will exalt you. Bless you guys. Amen. We'll see you next time. Do share us with your friends and loved ones.